why, why a new court was. Uh, many reasons uh, pressed the French Ministry of Justice to invest in a new building. First, the lack of space in the former courthouse, which makes the courts disperse across far, far oversized over, Par over, over, over Paris. Uh, the age of the facilities, as you can imagine, a thousand year old building is not easy to moderni modernize in keeping with historic monument preservation laws. Also, the inability to align with increasingly stringent safety regulations in France. Uh, for many years, the regulator had allowed its operations to continue in the former courthouse only with the permanent uh, on-site presence of a fire brigade, what is what's no longer uh, sustainable. So the need to improve the experience of citizens interacting uh, with the justice system, system sorry, the need to improve the working conditions of magistrates and other employees working at the court rows, the need for dignified prison conditions. Uh, for instance, in the former court, court rows, uh, two detainees had often to share a three square meter cell before, present, be, before being presented to judges. So the implementation also of new technologies, of course, and the evolution of security requirements. So the aim of the project was to regroup on a single site, on a single site all the judiciary of the Parisian courts, to provide a state-of-the-art facility for the, the magistrate, government officer, over people uh, working in the building, increase the number of the courtrooms from 26 in the former uh, building to 19, the new one, to welcome appropriately the 6,000 daily public attendees, Increase the security of the courthouses, um, provide dignified conditions for detainees again, and provide a full access, which is very important, to the facilities for uh, uh, dis uh, disabled users. So the Ministry of Justice chose to deliver the project through a public-private partnership, including 27 years of facility management. Uh, the overall cost over this period is estimated uh, at 2.4 billion euros. This covers repayment of, repayment of the loan, the cost of the facility management and other services provided by the uh, private partner, all taxes and the shareholder remuneration. So the project was awarded to Arelia, a special purpose vehicle whose sponsors are Buig, uh, the constructor, and two private equity funds, Dutch Infrastructure and Aberdeen Asset Management. Uh, the CAPEX was around, uh, was around 605 million euros, uh, of which uh, 508 million were dedicated to the property development made by Buick Batiment PPP. 35 million were devoted to the design team and other consultants and 427 to the main contractor, Buick Batiment. Uh, the facility management of the building will be provided by Buig Energy and Service for a global turnover of 735 million euro, euros. Sorry. Not that this includes, in addition to the soft and art facility management, the provision of fire and emergency response, reception desk and telephone switchboard services. So the site is located, as you can see, in the north of Paris. Uh, it is a former train station and national rail, rail maintenance facility redeveloped into a mixed-use neighborhood and park. You can see on the left the pictures of the site uh, before the redevelopment and on the right after redevelopment. As you can see, the courthouse is located at the north of the development area on the edge of the city ring road. About client requirements, you can see on the left uh, a typical uh, uh, color-coded uh, diagram extracted from the program, uh, which illustrates how the different users of the building interact. Uh, separation of circul circulation flows between the public, magistrates, and detainees was a prerequisite. Flexibility and modularity, this applies to all species, including the courtrooms, Natural, natural light in every space, even in the basement 
detention areas, sustainable development challenges to cope with the ambitious Paris climate plan, and a highly secure building as the courthouse could be a target for terrorist attack. So the project is made up of three interacting buildings, uh, the podium where the public can find all administrative and service support and attend court hearings, a central 5,000 square meter uh, lobby uh, distributes the 90 courtrooms over three double A uh, floors. Uh, there is a conference hall on the ground floor. Two parking lots are located in the basement for police vehicles. A staff restaurant bridges the podium and the so-called bastion building, uh, which comprises one basement floor for the storage of sealed evidence, two basement floors housing the prison with a total of 205 cells, two floors dedicated to facility management teams, three floors for the duty office of the prosecutor, one floor for the kitchen of the, uh, of the staff restaurants. The 160 meter high rise building has 26 office floors for magistrates and other civil servants, a cafe and snack bar at level 18, a library at level 30, a main corridor at level 8, which allows magistrates to take the lift, giving access to the courtroom's uh, levels. I know all that's missing is a rooftop swimming pool. So security and surveillance are high. 1,500 CCTV cameras ensure that there are no blind spots in the, in the, in the courtrooms. In fact, there are more cameras in the Paris courtrooms than there are in the whole Paris city streets. The building was delivered in five uh, and a uh, uh, half years, and that includes uh, the time required to obtain all permits. Uh, what we can say is that uh, in total, this construction project mobilized 10,000 people with, at its peak, almost 3,000 people working simultaneously. The courthouse opened at the middle of April this year, following, following an eight month transition period carrying out additional works related, related to security, uh, testing operational procedures, very important, and fully relocating personal material from the previous sites to these new base. So in terms of sustainable development, four main ideas uh, uh, have guided us, solar energy first, natural ventilation is used for the cooling of the public lobby. Uh, the systematic use uh, of ceiling panels uh, uh, of radiant ceiling panels, sorry, in office in meeting room for cooling and heating, and the vegetalization of the building by the creation of one hectare of uh, chili terraces, uh, the highest in Paris. The project has been anteriorly uh, developed in BIM, from design through to execution. The process generated 285 models with all subcontractors involved. Pre-stressing pre has been used to achieve the wasp waste at the bottom of each of the three blocks of the tower. And finally, the three concrete cores of the tower were built using the technique of slip forming. So before Amory tells you more from the perspective of the architect, I, I show you a short time lapse illustrating the, this technique, if it works. Okay, sorry. Thanks. So, um, despite not having the uh, the time lapse, um, the figures that Pierre Louis mentioned um, describe uh, something of a pharaonic uh, enterprise to to build this project. But actually, um, despite the timeline um, I'm shown. Uh, the competition actually started in 2010 and lasted about a year and a half prior to uh, the signature of the, the contract. So this is a project that um, certainly in our office has been um, a central focus for, for almost eight years um, and uh, was um, a primary um, a source of interest for, for the office based on the fact that it's uh, uh, our, our next uh, well, next big project, let's say, in Paris since this small coffee do some, some 40 years ago. Um, and, uh, and we think, um, given the, the originality of the, of the program, or at least the, the lack of precedent for this type of project um, in, 
in, in France, certainly, um, that it has a, uh, the capacity to have a, an equal impact on uh, the courthouse typology of building as the Centre Pompidou did on uh, museums uh, at that time. Um, so for all those reasons, uh, the, the project uh, mobilized a lot of people in our office and certainly um, a huge amount of, um, of, of attention. Um, a, a critical aspect of the, of the design of the, the project was um, when the program was first received, um, uh, there was a requirement or a suggestion that the administrative uh, building, which was um, proposed as a tower, um, would be completely dissociated from uh, the public building, which was to house all the courthouses, courtrooms, excuse me. Um, as we worked on the massing and the, the site, which was relatively small, just under two, two hectares, um, we realized that it was the only way to make it work as a, as a building, as the expression of the justice system um, going forward, was to actually combine the two buildings. And so we placed the um, tower component um, on top of the um, courtroom uh, building, which we now refer to as the podium. It seems simple like that, but uh, this has never been done in, had never been done in French um, building regulation before, specifically as it relates to fire regulation. Um, and so it took basically many years, and I have to say a certain amount of courage from um, our partner, Bouy uh, Construction, um, to, to, follow, to follow suit, and as well as the, the city and certainly the Ministry of Justice to understand the interest of combining these elements into a single building to have a single image for um, the new courthouse. Now given the, the mass of the, of the, the building, we're looking at uh, about 100, 140,000 square meters of gross, uh, gross area. Um, the other difficulty was it's been several decades uh, since a high-rise building has actually been built uh, within, the, within the edges of Paris, within the limits of Paris. Um, and though we're on the edge, we're still within the, within the, the ring road, uh, within the periphery. And um, certainly a major, a major concern, um, uh, both of, of the city and the, the uh, inhabitants of Paris, but also um, us, in terms of how the building relates to the context of the city, to the historical monuments within the city, to the views from uh, the city looking back towards this building. And so the strategy was to create quite a slim uh, building that's about 25 meters wide um, in uh, the uh, north-south direction and then obviously much longer in the other direction, uh, in the east-west direction. Um, and by orienting it um, aligned to um, the new Martin Luther King uh, Park, which the, this view is, is taken from, um, it simultaneously aligned the building um, towards some of the critical monuments, protected monuments within Paris. Um, and so from, from many monuments within Paris, the building basically um, disappears into essentially what is a, a 25 meter wide um, 160 meter tall um, slender tower. Now, uh, Pierre, we already described the, the, the composition of, of the building. Um, the, the podium houses the uh, courtrooms um, at the base and the tower uh, sits above, um, tiered uh, into three, three blocks. Um, these blocks um, originally um, were an expression of the program components um, of the three different major components of the judiciary that had to be housed within the building. Now, of course, uh, over a period of uh, eight years, um, the uh, number of people working in the um, anti-terrorism uh, unit, for instance, uh, increased, whereas the number working in another uh, unit decreased. And so there's been some, some movement in that. But the basic premise of subdividing this tower into three, um, three elements um, the first block, 25 meters wide by 170, 170 meters long, um, the second 75 by 25, and the third 50 by 25, um, enabled us to, su to subdivide the building and create essentially gaps and voids um, within the vertical stacking of the, of the building. And so at various levels, so at the level eight on top of the podium, there's a large planted um, uh, terrace um, at level um, 19, there's another uh, large planted terrace that's a communal space for all the people working in the building, and then likewise at level 29. Um, and this is the particularity of a, of a justice um, building, administrative building, is that the offices are not um, open space. 
they tend to be closed uh, offices. And so people are working in office spaces with one or two people um, in confidential uh, condition, in conditions that require confidentiality and a certain level of um, security. So having these um, common spaces was essential uh, to the project. Um, the, the envelope um, of the building is, is uh, very important to the um, overall performance, energetic performance of, uh, of the building. Um, the double skin, it's a double skin uh, facade uh, on the east and west uh, facades of the, of the tower. Um, the exterior um, uh, glazing um, basically extends down from, from floor to floor and enables us to give expression to the concept of the building, which was the overall creation of the um, stacked volumes. The interior um, uh, window of the of the um, uh, unitized system um, is operable uh, at once, both for comfort and for for maintenance. While between the double skin, uh, there's a roller blind that's uh, connected to the uh, building control system. So these are the, the planted terraces um, that, uh, that occupy the, the various levels of the building. The, the idea um, of creating the communal space, this communal space was not included in the program itself, um, but the idea of it was primarily that, conceptually, was to say, if we can give the people working in this building better working conditions, then perhaps, um, and we don't always have a lot to act on as architects, but perhaps if the working conditions are better, perhaps the administration of justice itself will be better. Um, the notion of natural light uh, is a very important uh, aspect in the project. Um, the floor plate of the uh, podium, um, which is 170 meters long by about uh, uh, 80 meters deep, um, which houses all the courtrooms um, and all the, the major public spaces, um, also we had to um, bring light into every courtroom. And so with that size of floor plate, um, we had to come up with different types of solutions to bring light down into the, into the core of the building. Um, and one of these strategies is um, on level eight, on the podium level, we have about 120 of these um, light wells that, are, um, that have a, a glazed component that's a meter 50 uh, in diameter. Um, the first um, few rows that are nearest to the tower are fire rated, and the others um, contribute also to the natural ventilation of the building um, and to the um, smoke exhaust as well. Now the natural light, of course, for the public, and uh, Pierre, we touched on it earlier, the uh, dignity of the um, detainees um, occupying the space is obviously um, a very important concern, especially when you look at the conditions um, that um, pre-existed this new facility. So this is the, the ground floor. Um, the, this, the public circulation is uh, basically a 170 meter long uh, corridor, 160 meter long corridor. Um, punctuated by three atriums, um, the central one being the, the most important, which is a 28 meter tall atrium, um, which is um, capped by the uh, skylights above. Now, of course, um, in terms of the, the interior design, the interior design, the interior organization, uh, development of the, the project, um, this is where we were coming from. Um, this is the existing Idracite um, building. Um, and so what we were trying to uh, work with was, or develop, was um, a project solution that, um, uh, to a certain degree, rid itself of the weight um, and the uh, overload of symbolism um, that exists in, uh, currently exists in the building. And uh, to do that, we worked on uh, solutions to ensure maximum amounts of transparency um, and natural light and light colors um, into the uh, into the building. This is the view from the 28 meters looking down into the central atrium. And as we go up, the courtrooms uh, levels develop to the courtrooms themselves, again with natural light. Smaller civil courtrooms. And a whole host of different strategies had to be developed for those 90 courtrooms. And again, some communal spaces. And uh, this uh, final image of uh, the rendering versus reality uh, at the end. Thank you. <laughs>